Welcome to Chris Parking Shooting Sports. Now, as you see on my channel, I do an awful lot of gun reviewing, and part of that is testing muzzle velocities, which give me muzzle energies, specifically a lot on air rifles. Um, the other thing with air rifles, it's nice to watch how the pressure curve works and to see how the maintenance of consistent velocity is affected by different numbers of regulators, different fill pressures, and obviously tuning elements too, which is particularly appropriate to FX air rifles. Now, this isn't brand new, but this is the FX Pocket Chronograph. This is the Mark II version. And as far as boxes go, it's my ideal box because it's small, it's compact, and it doesn't have a load of fluff with it that you don't actually need. So that is the FX Chronograph. Now, all you have to do when you take it out of the box is remove the back cover and put three AAA batteries in it, which are the smaller size. So once you put those in, that powers the radar, which is what measures your bullet speed. So this sits in close proximity to your rifle and works in total harmony with your smartphone or tablet with iOS or Android operating system with a simple app download. So if you look at it here, you see the back of it, that's the front of it. So that's the radar sensor, which wants to be pointing towards your target. So when the bullet flies over the top of it, it can measure the distances in the Doppler effect on it. Now, it comes now with a barrel mount on it, which effectively goes underneath your moderator or your barrel or your air cylinder, and you can put this in place with rubber bands. The alternate selection you can do is, and there are some caveats to this, is that you can put it underneath the barrel of the rifle, and as I was doing yesterday at the range using this 2-2 rimfire, you shoot over the top of it like that. But I'll explain a few of the details of why that is and isn't beneficial to you. Because if you imagine the bullet is coming out of the muzzle here, the closer that is to the bore line, effectively, the more true you get without any kind of cosine angle. The cosine angle is the angle between the flight of the bullet and where the chronograph is placed. So if it's high there, it's a low cosine angle. If it's low there, it's a high cosine angle. And similarly, the further you can place it back from the muzzle, and this is all explained in the detailed instructions, the further you can place it back from the muzzle, the lower you get the cosine angle. And this gives you more accuracy in terms of the data it derives. One thing I will say though is, although this will quite happily attach to the moderator or the air cylinder on an air rifle, um, you can, I've always been a little bit adverse personally to attaching anything to a barrel because barrel harmonics are something we want to keep as consistent as possible and adding masses to them obviously affects those harmonics. So that's something I chose not to do. So I put it on the bench directly in front of the gun and although it was you know, a little bit further below the barrel, it still gives me consistent readings as long as I'm using the same variables every time. So if I use the same gun position, the same moderator position, the same chronograph position, I'm not gonna get any variety but it might not give me the perfect precision result you know to give me exact ballistics but the more you know about ballistics the more you know that one or two feet per second here or there is not the be all and end all the big mistakes you might make but we'll go into this more in detail in just a second now everything works on the chronograph with a smartphone app so if you go to the app store or the ios store you can get that app very very easily and once you go into it it will basically connect via bluetooth to the sensor so all there is is a single button on the back and if i just switch that on it comes up with a green light also has battery capacity so you do need to make sure you tell it whether it's alkaline or lithium batteries because they have slightly different voltages and it helps it measure the voltage correctly but now that's inviting me to connect so power on your fx radar and click connect when your device is found so it's found it so i'm clicking connect which is what i have now 
So essentially I can shoot over this and it will give me readouts, which is fantastic and great. But more importantly, what I can do is I can create various different profiles. Now I've set up a few profiles yesterday just using a few different guns. So I've set up an FAC air rifle shooting 21 grain slugs. I've been using it on a 2-2 rimfire, which is still subsonic. This will work up to about 1300 feet per second. So you generally won't have a problem with 2-2 rimfire. And I've also set up a sub 12 foot pound air rifle, which is my own HW100-177. Um, to be fair, as soon as I had it out the box, um, I had it set up within about two or three minutes and I had it in the garden with the air rifle, just shooting pellets over the top of it. And it worked instantly, so I was thoroughly impressed. And the thing you have to remember that from my perspective as a, as a professional gun reviewer, tools that make my job easier are a lot more attractive and this was extremely simple to use. So if we go through this instruction manual here, it gives us an awful lot of data on how to set it up and it's all in the app. So, you know, there's no documentation provided with it. Everything is online, but it's actually very easy to use. It's well laid out and it's simple. And I like the simple black and white format that's easy to read and it's not, you know, hundreds of logos and adverts everywhere. So I don't mind it at all. Now, if we look in here, that shows you it with it strapped onto a sound moderator there. Um, if we look at various other factors and functions on it, it goes through all the menu screens and how you're going to work it. But I'll leave those alone for the moment and just scroll back out the main menu, scroll through some of the features. So if I go, for example, on a new shot string, when I'm using it, I can use it visually or audibly. It will actually tell me and read out the velocity figure that it's just recorded. And interestingly, it also times the, t the, the interval between your shot count. I was using one air rifle, which is particularly fast to fire, and I actually, it told me I had a 0.8 second interval between every shot. But I was kind of doing a fast fire test on it. The other thing it will tell me is if I get to the end of that magazine capacity, it asked me to enter earlier. And it will say, you know, magazine is about to empty or last shot scenario. So when you've got the unit set up, you can use it in several different fashions. If I look at it in the home position, it will just give me a simple data readout of the actual muzzle velocity, which is fine. It will work easily, if you, especially if you've got multiple rifles and you just want quick test doing. If you go into the shot string, that tells you the actual records of what you've just shot with that particular rifle. So this was the FAC air rifle using 21 grain slugs and it gives me a detailed list of all the muzzle velocities and all the muzzle energies. I can actually display that in a graph format as well. If I click on that little toggle there, that will show me in a graph format, it shows the muzzle velocities peaking up and down. Now you can't really alter the scale of this and it's not totally clear but it does show you from one shot to the next the differences in the actual muzzle velocity and of course ideally in ideal world you would want that as a completely flat line. Most rifles will move ever so slightly, this one particularly was jumping up and down quite a lot but it was reaching the end of its charge at this particular point. Now it gives me the shot count, it gives me the high, the low, the average, the velocity spread and also the standard deviation from that spread, which is useful data if you want to feed that into any further ballistic applications. If we look in profiles, we can see I've got several profiles set up and in settings you can set up each profile for the actual projectile with projectile weight, you can give it a name. You can also set up the return signal, so minimum to maximum enables it to sort of overrule any uh, ambient noise it's effectively getting from different size, larger or smaller projectiles. It comes set up at 20% and this has worked on everything I've needed so far out in the open field. I might have to experiment with that at some point if it does give me any variability that I don't want recorded. If we go to the application settings rather than the individual profile settings, this will give me the actual global settings that apply to all the profiles. So if we look at this, for example, we've got units. So you can pick your muzzle velocity in feet per second, kilometers per hour, joules, mile per hour, meters per second, or you can have it as foot pounds. There are two figures displayed instantaneously. So you can choose any of these muzzle velocity units or muzzle energy units, and it depends which one you want displaying first. It will display them both and it will read them out to you. You can put in your projectile weight in grains or grams. You can also put your ranges in from yards or meters. If we look at audio, this gives us the chance to have the primary reading actually audibly generated so a voice speaks to you and tells you exactly what it's done so you don't need to break position you don't need to look at the gun and it also reassures you that everything's recording and working secondary reading if for example you have your muzzle energy as your secondary reading it will give you the energy level for that shot as well these are all available on the actual readout but this is for the audio the magazine empty warning works that goes back to where you put in your setup for that individual profile whether it's a five round a 10 round a 12 round and it will just tell you if you're coming up to that last shot 
it doesn't matter massively, but some people may find that slightly helpful. Now, if you go into calibration mode, you can actually vary it by a slight percentage if you want it to agree with another chronograph you might be using simultaneously or for which you've already recorded data on that specific projectile and rifle. If we click on battery at the bottom, that gives us the option to select alkaline or lithium so you get the correct display for remaining capacity. Well, the final things to mention really are what you want to do with the data. I simply sometimes screenshot data because I want to use it immediately in video footage or something like that. You can also screen record if you wanted to, but it gives you the option to save the data or email the data back to yourself, for example, copy it to the clipboard. And there we go, the last menu there is to go for a new string, start entirely again. Now, I think this is a really good item. I've been remarkably surprised by just how simple and effective it is. It works extremely easily. I might experiment a little bit more with the variation of changing positions on it. I might add it to the barrel as well for certain scenarios, but personally, I like to coordinate my actual target testing with my velocity recording. So I prefer not to add things to the barrel, but I found it was no problem with it just underneath the barrel. The only thing is it's nice if you can actually see it here through the bipod or whatever structure you've got it on, because I had it on a big rest bag at one point, and of course you can't see it. And if you do allow the unit to go quiet for some time, it will actually auto power off, because remember, it's actually bouncing radar out of this all the time, so it can pick up immediately on what's actually been projected in front of it. So if it does switch off, it, this will go to a different color on the app, and it shows you immediately if you've not got any connection. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that little rundown on the useful FX airgun chronograph, which will, of course, work for rimfires too. Please like, subscribe, comment, click the notification bell, and keep track of the regular uploads. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.